Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Splunk.conf19. Brought to you by Splunk. <laughs> Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas for Splunk.com. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We have two great guests here, Tim Woodbury, Director of State and Local Affairs for Splunk, and Charlie Crocker, CEO of Zone Haven. A very innovative startup doing some incredible things with Splunk Ventures financing, some early financing around really tech for good. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank the you, Thanks for Thank coming you. on. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, so Charlie, first explain what you guys are doing real quick because I think this is a great example of what I've been seeing now for two years now, but now in the past year, a renaissance of entrepreneurial activity around mission-driven tech for good, where entrepreneurs are using the cloud and SaaS models and platforms like Splunk to stand up mission value. Quickly. Mission value, I like the term. Explain what you're doing. Um, so, simply put, we're building an evacuation planning and support tool. So, Right now, there are more and stronger fires happening. Over the last five years, we've had um, more than half of California's most destructive wildfires happen just in the last five years. So it's, it's mission critical that we figure this out now. These fires are so big, the goal is really just to get people out of harm's way. And that's a difficult job to figure out at three o'clock in the morning with a map on the hood of a pickup truck. Yeah. And so we're building the zone. There's no ways for fire. There's no ways for fire. Ways has got public safety. I, I know, right? but people know ways, but the thing is is that yesterday I was watching on TV in Pacific Palisades, California, a airdrop of water on the canyon right before a house, and I see the people running. Right. They're like running for their lives. They are. This is serious yeah. business. Exactly. So you guys are trying to provide a system? We're trying to, what we've built are a set of zones, the ability for the fire department, law enforcement, and OES to work on customizing hyper-local evacuation plans. Hyper-local, down to the neighborhood level, and then we're scaling that statewide. So how do you make sure that this fire department and these three law enforcement groups are coordinated before, and how do they have the conversation with the community before the event happens? If we can save five minutes at the time the event happens, we're going to save lives. So this is really about making efficiency around the first responders on the scene, for leveraging data, which maps are there. Maps, uh, data, data, dynamic data, telemetry data, where the fire's going to go, simulations for how the fire could potentially grow, who needs to get out of harm's way first, what's that going to do to the traffic and road network. Talk about the origination story, then we'll get to the Splunk involvement. The origination story is you're sitting around, you're talking to friends in the business. So we have colleagues and friends that are in the business, and many of them, you know, from the Silicon Valley, these guys are innovative leaders in, fi in fire, and they've got a lot of really good ideas on how to make their jobs better. But they don't have a tech team, they don't have a tech arm. So we literally said, look, we'll come in and we'll make work what your vision is. And that started to expand, and now we started to move from these smaller uh, jurisdictions to much larger jurisdictions. Data is driving the future, that's a tagline I'm reading, I've seen the new branding, by the way, the new branding's very, very strong, yeah. by the way, I love it. Thank you. Um, so, this is an example of data-driven value Absolutely. that a constituency fire professionals, that's yeah. all they think about is how to make people safe and, put, and get in harm's way to try to solve the fires. Yeah. They don't have tech teams, they don't have a data center, they don't have like, we yep. take them to boot up a consulting to come in, do a waterfall, have a meeting, yeah. and by that time, there's, there's yeah, like a we, fatigue, they can't just do that. They can't stand up. How, do, how did you guys get involved in this? It's data driven, obviously. What's the story? Yeah, we, we, when we say data everything, we really mean it. Uh, it's really, you know, it's a personal story for me. Uh, you know, I, I am on the government affairs team here at Splunk, so I manage our relationships with governors and mayors, and these are the issues that they care about, right? When the city's burning down, the mayor cares about that. The governor, this is, you know, one of the governor and California's major initiatives is trying to find solutions on wildfires. You know, I met Charlie, uh, my hometown, Arinda, California, our fire chief in that town was one of sort of the outside advisors working with Charlie on uh, this idea. And we we're and I, I met him at a house party where the, the fire chief was telling me to trim my trees back and shrubs back. And then I was at a conference three days later, that same fire chief, Dave Winokur, was on a panel with like folks from a supercomputer lab and NASA and 
MIT. I was like, uh, you know, my fire chief's still the smartest guy in that panel. I got to meet this guy. A few weeks later, we were literally in the field doing these proof of concepts with sensors and data. Super savvy folks. Some of the other folks from Cal Fire there. Uh, you know, Jonathan Cox was with us today here at, at, at yeah. Conf. Uh, and you know, we've we've just been collaborating the whole time and seeing you know that that Splunk can really put some fire power behind these guys. And we to see like, look, they've got the trust of these customers, and we need to make sure this idea happens. It's a great idea, and it's going to save lives. It's crazy. He, we did they, we did a, a test burn where we run a small burn on a day where we were very confident it won't it won't grow. Put the sensors out right next to a, a school in Arinda. Yeah. It was his kid's school. Yeah, my kid. I have a kindergartner that goes to that school. So it's a, it's it's slightly this is personal I, for you. I, I, could, I, I could be uh, I, I could be said that this is yeah. just me protecting my own, but uh, it, it, it is something that I think will save lives around the world. Well, I think yeah. first of all, there's a, there is huge human safety issues on both sides, yep. fire safety, put in the in, in harm's way, those professionals go out all day long putting yep. their lives in, at risk yep. to save human be other human beings, and so that's critical. But if you look at California, there's other impact. Right. There's cost impact, rolling blackouts because yep. they can't instrument the lines properly just to, because of the red red flag warnings of, of wind. Yep. I mean, that could be, that's disruptive to business, that's disruptive to safety, yep. so, so pg and is not doing us any favors either. Yep. So it sounds so easy. You just fix it. Yeah. It yeah. sounds easy, yeah. <laughs> well, I think with pg and &E, it's interesting. We do need to prevent wildfires in really any way that we can, but like you said, if we can bring more data to the problem, maybe we can have the blackouts be smaller. You know, they don't necessarily have to be yeah. as big. There's, there's certainly no lack of motivation to find solutions to this issue. There are, you know, lives on the line, there's billions of dollars on the line that, you know, these types of solutions, Zone Haven, are part of, part of what is going to fix it, but there are many very large stakeholders that need these solutions very quickly. Well, you yeah. know, the doers out there making it happen are the people on the front lines, yep. and the people that are trying to protect our citizens. Our citizens. Yep. And this sounds like a great example of tech for good where you guys are doing an entrepreneurial effort with people who need it. There's a business model, it's not for free, you're not a nonprofit, you're going to get paid. There's a business model behind it. There is a business model behind it, and um, I think the value proposition is only beginning to be understood, right? There are so many missions in so many different ways. Wildfires are massive. You can come at them from satellites, you can come at them from on the ground. We are working with the people on the ground who need to get people out of harm's way. We're focusing on making their jobs easier so they're safer and they yeah. can get people out more quickly. You know, guys, in the tech business, we always talk and we go, these events, we're replatforming our business, a digital transformation, yeah. you know, all the, all the buzzwords. Right, right. This is actually an acute example of what I would call replatforming life because you're taking a real life example fire, you know, California fire and forest, they're out in the trees trimming. I mean, this yeah. is all real life. Yeah. This isn't like, you know, some digital website. Well, we sort of, yeah, I mean, I've been in the data business for more, more time than I can remember, and We've got the tools, tools like Splunk, tools like Amazon Web Services. We've got the data, there's satellites all over. We've got smart people in machine learning. We need to start applying that to do good, right? It, it, it exists, we do not need to go invent new technology right now in order to solve this problem. Charlie, I'm really inspired by your, your position and your, your posture, I want you to spend more time talking about that feature because you're an entrepreneur, you're not just a tech for good social justice warrior, you're an experienced data entrepreneur applying it to as a social good project. Right. So it's not like you just wake up, I'm going to change the world, you're actually doing it. There's a path for other entrepreneurs to make money to do good things fast. Talk about the journey because with cloud computing, it's not like a 10 year horizon. There's a path for immediate benefit. So well, the, I mean, the path, so, I mean, in terms of um, creating a profitable venture, we're a young company. We feel like we have a good, good direction. We feel like there is a market for this. We also feel like there is public-private partnerships here as well. Yeah. I think that we can take the same solutions that we have here and apply them to campuses. You could apply it to, you know, a biotech campus, a university campus. You could apply it to a military base, right? Yeah. There's insurance could be involved in this because insurance risk, people are losing yeah. insurance in their homes as well. So, you know, there, there's a lot of different angles that we can take uh, for this exact same, same yeah, problem. What's the expression, data to everything? Da yeah, everything. this is an example of taking data 
and applying it to some use case. Well, to a very specific School use case. School evacuation. Exactly. Um, Neighborhood evacuation and, and really building uh, the community fabric so that people take care of each other and can get out together. Where are the vulnerable populations in that zone? Who's going to go respond to those if, if the fire department can't come in, right? How are we going to get those people out? Love the vision. You guys are awesome for putting some cash in there. Splunk Ventures, congratulations. Talk about the product. Where are you guys at? You're using Splunk. you putting data sensors out there. You're leveraging existing data, both. Take us through some of the, you know, the nuts and bolts of what's going on in the product. Right, so part of it is building out some data sets. So there are some data sets that don't exist, but the government and the counties and the private sector have built out a huge vault a corpus of data around where the buildings are, where the people are, where the cell phones are, where the traffic is. So we're able to leverage that information um, as we have it today. Um, the technology, we're using the Amazon stack. It's easy for us to spin up databases. It's easy for us to build out and expand as, as we grow. And then with Splunk, we're able to have it a place for all this real-time data to land and for us to be able to build APIs to pull yeah. it out very, very simply. You know, I was having a conversation with Teresa Carlson who runs Amazon Web Services Public Sector. A variety of these things or projects are popping up. Tech for good, that's for profit, it helps people. And the whole idea of time to value with the cloud and Splunk's platform of yeah. leveraging diverse data, making data real to whether it's real-time time series data or you yeah. know, using a fabric search or you know, accelerated processing capabilities, is that you can get the value quicker. So yeah. if you got an idea, you right. don't need to wait two years to gestate whether it was it a hit or not. Yeah. You can iterate now, so this idea of the startup, agile startup, is now being applied to these public sector yeah, lean like startup. things. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's everything. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're spot on, and, and uh, you know, the unique element of Splunk with some of these data sources, we don't necessarily know, you know which ones are going to be the right ones. We're talking about satellite data, sensor data, you know, we're, we're, some of this on, on part of it is we're building an outdoor smoke alarm, right? No one's ever done that before, so you know, we, we, the the core nature of Splunk's technology being able to easily yeah. you know, try to see if that is the right data source is critical to giving people yeah. the bandwidth to go try to make this happen. I mean, you guys are a great example at Zone Haven, Charlie, you and your team, of what I call a reconfiguration of the value creation of startups. You don't need to have full stack developer. You got half the stack on Amazon. The domain expertise and the intellectual property is flipped around from being software and this intellectual moat to domain specific intellectual property. You took the idea of firefighters and you're implementing their idea into your domain expertise using scale and data to create a viable business. The other thing I want to throw in there though, and this is something that people often forget, a big part of our investment is going to be in user experience. This thing needs to be usable by the masses. It cannot be a complicated solution. UX is the new software, data is the new code, yeah. but the, anyone can start a company if they have an innovative idea. You don't have to have a unique algorithm. Yeah. It could be a use case to solve a problem, whether and it's fire. And if you fire, have a unique algorithm, you can put it on Splunk's platform or Amazon's yeah. platform yeah. and scale it. This is going to change, I think, the economic landscape of what I call tech for good now, but it's entrepreneurship redefined. Yeah. You guys are a great working example of that. Uh, congratulations on the vision. Thank you. Uh, to you and your team. Thanks for no. coming on theCUBE, thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is a great example of what's going on with data for everything. Of course, this is theCUBE, we're a CUBE for everything. We go to all the events, talk to the smartest people, and get the data and share that with you here in Las Vegas for .conf. 10 years of the conference, our seventh year. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.